Hi, it's Susan and welcome to this video. This is a time-lapse process of this winter cabin landscape painting. I'm going to take you through the stages at which I built this painting up and how I approached it. So the first stage that I did was the wet on wet painting of the sky and you can see that the clouds I didn't quite lift them. I started with painting around the white and then did a little bit of lifting. For the most part, I'm trying my personal best to leave the sky a little bit less touched than I usually do. I find that I tend to like my own results better when I don't fuss with it too much. And so even though it's really an interpretation of what's in the photo, it's good enough to represent that it's a sky with clouds. The next thing that I am doing is the slight shadows that are in the distant snow on the ground. And I want to keep these fuzzy as possible because it's not really the focus of the painting. And so I'm trying to keep them fuzzy and paint them while they're wet, as well as doing the trees this way too. Now I, in all honesty, I don't know exactly how my trees are going to turn out. I'm testing it and putting in some of these lighter wet on wet tree forms, thinking that I could layer over them later, or maybe I'll just cover them up completely with darker trees. And I think that's the beauty of working wet on wet at this stage at the very beginning is sometimes we put in things that are really light and even if we don't like them, they tend to be able to be covered up later uh, when we're painting details or painting those darker values. Next up is the distant mountains and you know, doing things like atmospheric perspective, which is really the idea that things in the distance are going to be more blue. And for paintings, I feel like it works better when it's blue and not detailed and kind of, you know, misty or cloudy looking when it comes to these landscapes, I feel like that really helps it feel like it falls into the distance. And so again, I'm painting while the paper is still wet and adding some uh, lighter details that aren't so rigid. So they don't have hard edges, but there's definitely still a texture to it that's created from the different values here. So there's a light, light, light blue and then a little bit of a darker blue green and that kind of helps create the texture of the mountain without defining it too much. Next up is the cabin. Now the cabin is one of the focal points I would say about this painting and so I wanted to spend a little bit more time on it. So getting that light face of the cabin and then the darker face of the cabin and all of the shadows on it was quite important because I think that helps bring focus to it when we're putting details in the right places and even the snow that's on top of the cabin it has a shadow to it it definitely has form that needs to be captured carefully uh, especially at the scale that I'm painting and um, I'm using a smaller brush in order to do that and to add a gradient to the shadow so that's not has doesn't have a hard line Next up is the shadows. So the shadows take up quite a bit of this painting and shadows are something that I'm working on, especially shadows on snow. It's not something I have a lot of experience with and so I wanted to practice it, which is most of the reason why I picked this image. And the shadows, I definitely wanted to have a soft edge, but not be as soft as the sky and the clouds, for example. So even though I wet the paper, I actually went back and dried it a little bit with a blow dryer. So the stage of the wetness of the paper isn't quite so wet. And when that's the case, then the paint doesn't bloom quite as quickly and there's you have a little bit more control and you but you still get this really soft edge which I think is lovely although this is where you know I'm personally learning about the different stages of the wetness of watercolor paper and how to manage them and so sometimes it can get dry too fast where I have to come back and then re-wet the paper in order to continue working on it, which is what I had to do here. But I think it was quite successful in that way because I caught it early enough and then I was able to continue working in this manner, which I had control 
over the paint and the shadows and how much they were blooming and it wasn't getting out of my control. So it was something I could still manage and try and create that effect that I was going for. Now that the bulk of the shadows are done, I can come back and work on the cabin. So the reason why I skip around sometimes is because when I'm working, the parts of the painting that are still wet that can't be done yet, I have to wait. And so sometimes I'll go to do something else. So that was the case with the cabin. When the face of the cabin is a little bit wet and I want to put in harder edge details like these vertical lines or even that shadow that's under the roof, then I need to wait a bit for the paint to dry unless I blow dry it or something like that. So sometimes I just skip around and do different parts of the painting because I'm waiting for other parts to dry. So now I can come back and add some of those details to the cabin that give it a little bit more character and texture. Now the last and final layer, so to say, is the trees. So the trees I am putting in when the paper is dry. So it's dried over time as I've been painting and it's probably not completely dry, but it's dry enough to get these hard edges. And I can take a small brush and do detailed branches, detailed leaves, and start to really add in that element of contrast. So the contrast is happening because I'm contrasting those soft edges with hard edges. I'm contrasting lighter values with darker values. And this is, in all honesty, where I can really get lost and spend the most time, and not always in a good way. This is where I can get carried away, perhaps adding too much detail when I really did wanna try and keep the details a little bit looser. But I think that this is a journey that I'm on, that I'm learning how to decipher where I put in more strokes versus less strokes, and where perhaps I want to use hard edges versus keeping things soft. And I think that's a very personal decision for each of us, and it may likely just change every single time we do a different painting. And so I want to, I guess, just say that because I don't think that it's apparent sometimes when you're just watching a video of someone paint that they have doubts too but I definitely am not always sure about exactly where I'm going and I'm making decisions on the fly and sometimes they feel wrong and sometimes I think I just need to remind myself that I'm still figuring it out too and that it may change the next time my approach might be different next time but for this painting in this moment that's just how I decided to do it. Hopefully you enjoyed watching this video and that it helped understanding what order I did things in. And if you still have questions or you're finding yourself thinking that you might want a little bit more guidance and have someone take you through the steps to practicing how to do this and getting to a final, then you can consider joining me inside of the Paint With Me community where there's a set of lessons all based on this painting where we build up from a value sketch through exercises for each element in the painting all the way through the final. 
Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.